morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, The Value of Feedback When You're Public Speaking, When You're Presenting. The thing with public speaking is it's really quite scary. And we run this internal dialogue, the self-doubt, the little person who sits on your shoulders and maybe whispers into your ear, Peter, you could have done better than that. Gee, you really mucked that one up. I hope they're finding this valuable. And of course, this self-dialogue, this self-talk doesn't necessarily give us the feedback we need. So one of the things with public speaking is it's not about you, it's about your audience. So today is not about me, it's about the audience on this webinar. So how do we know if we're being effective, if we're being influential, if we're engaging our audience, how do we know? And the way we know is through feedback. So that is the value of feedback. Feedback helps us to grow, helps us to improve, helps us to better serve our clients. So good morning, everyone. Peter Jew is my name. I'm a public speaking trainer and coach, and my passion is helping you be more effective, more confident and more influential every time you stand up to speak. So welcome to today's webinars and welcome those people just joining. Please ask questions as we go. I'll keep an eye on the dialogue box, the question box or the comments box. And I'm recording this webinar. So if you don't get everything or I gloss over something, the recording will be made available for you for those who may wish to review it. Ask questions, comment, but most importantly, think and apply to yourself. How do you get feedback at the moment? What can you do differently to help you with your feedback? Is the feedback you're getting the right kind of feedback? Is it helpful to you? in your training, in your presenting, in your facilitation style. So please participate and I'll answer the questions to the best of my ability. So feedback is the food of champions, according to Ken Blanchard, author of The One Minute Manager and other business books. They also say that champions eat feedback for breakfast. Uh, Feedback's scary also. What if you don't like the feedback? I had some interesting feedback once that caused me some concern and I've learned to be able to dismiss some feedback. And that feedback was, so let me set the scene. I put water, nice iced water and glasses on the table for all my participants. And the feedback post-workshop was, Peter, I am allergic to chloride and fluoride in the water. You should have provided chloride, fluoride free water. So for the next 12 months, I carried around in my presentation pack, one liter of distilled mineral water, chloride, fluoride free water, and I never needed it again. So some feedback you need to take with a pinch of salt. Here's the thing where feedback becomes really powerful. Emotional intelligence and Daniel Goleman and his seven traits for emotional intelligence. And we know that empathy is now a leadership skill and we need to be able to listen and be empathic. But one of them is self-awareness. And then once you become self-aware, your ability to regulate, change your behavior as a result of that self-awareness. Self-awareness comes from feedback. Another feedback I had, which was very valuable, I was unaware that when I walk across the stage, I used to scratch my backside. I'm glad the camera's not down this low. But I used to scratch my backside. So for seven hours doing a one day workshop, I'd continually scratch my back, backside. And the feedback was, Peter, it's really distracting you scratching your backside. Have you got worms? Do you need to have a a dose of combantrum to deal with your worms. And I had no idea that I was doing that. 
self-awareness. I was now aware that I was a behind scratcher. So I was now have the ability to now do a workshop without scratching my behind. That's why feedback is so valuable. It helps us to become aware of what we're doing. It also helps us become aware of the negative self-talk and our self-doubt. And if in the audience's eyes, you're doing a really good job, that is what matters. Feedback helps you to understand how you're doing in terms of your impact on the audience. A couple of rules around feedback. It needs to be, needs to be actionable. So I would say the fluoride chloride allergy is not really something that, that I can take much action about. If that was my, if that was my dietary requirement, if that was my uh, sensitivity, I would probably carry my own bottle of water around. Now I've just come back from Karatha and I provided gluten-free and vegetarian uh, lunches and morning and afternoon teas. And I can cater for that, but I cannot always cater because I fly around Australia, fluoride, chloride, free water. So that's probably not actionable feedback. It needs to be specific. What do I mean by specific? If someone says to you, yeah, that was really, that, really good. That was lovely. That was nice. That was a good presentation. What can you do with that? What can you do with that? in terms of your continuous improvement and taking it up another notch. That was really good. Or alternatively, oh, that was a bit of a shocker, wasn't it? Yeah, that wasn't your best presentation, not very good. Once again, what can I do with that to improve? So specific is around. Peter, we notice you're scratching your backside and um, Peter, um, we notice um, you use um, quite a few um, filler words and um, you don't make much eye contact when um, you're speaking to your audience. So we're not trusting you. You've got hand gestures that just bounce up and down as if you are conducting an orchestra. And this is quite distracting. Wow, that's wonderful feedback. That's specific. You need to give people permission to give honest feedback because they may cotton coat the feedback. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was a really good presentation. Just notice just a few arms, but yeah, don't worry about it. It's really good. It needs to be immediate. The US Navy SEALs after every campaign, they do immediate real-time feedback, how the mission went, what the risks were, what they could have done better, how they performed as a team. This is in real combat, but also in all of their practice and their training, which is the majority of their work, real-time feedback. If I say to you, oh, that presentation you did in November uh, last year, I noticed you had quite a few ums and ahs. Which presentation in November? Get the feedback as immediate as you can. So that's a little model to make sure you coach and put some structure around your feedback processes. So with that in mind, and the import and the understanding that it's what the audience thinks that matters, maybe accepting for fluoride, fluoride and chloride, chloride free water, but I'm speaking today for you. So your feedback after this webinar would be valuable and helpful. How can we get feedback? So I've got six strategies that I use to obtain feedback, depending on the circumstances, depending where I'm presenting. So the first one is, have a trusted colleague or friend in the audience give you feedback. Have someone that you trust, uh, a supervisor, a colleague, a peer, that you can get them to give you feedback. 
But as they give you feedback and you brief them beforehand, make sure you ask them to, and I'm going to toggle back, I'm going to make sure you ask them to give you specific feedback. So you arrive early. You're the first in the room to present and the first person who comes up, a friend or whatever, or you brief them before, can you keep an eye on my ums and my ahs? I've been told I've got really noisy hands. My aim today at today's meeting is to not use my hands as much in such a way that it is distracting. Could you let me know if I keep my hands a little bit quieter and just gesture more appropriately, uh, more in line with what I'm saying? That's specific feedback. Oh, and if you could give me that feedback straight after the meeting. I'll put sort of five minutes aside or shoot me an email and let me know. That's the first way of getting feedback. That colleague, that trusted friend who's going to be in the meeting, who's going to be at the presentation, who can give you feedback. Tonight, I'm presenting at the Project Management Institute, Western Australia chapter at 6.30 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. I'm the keynote speaker. Scary, project managers, engineers, data people. Uh, my wife is coming along to give me feedback. And of course, a free feed. So I've invited my wife who will observe me and give me specific feedback on how my presentation went on how did I go engaging a group of engineers, a group of numbers people, project managers, process and number and data driven, more so than empathy and emotional intelligence. How am I going to go engaging them? Violet is going to let me know. Second way of getting feedback, you don't have any trusted colleagues attending at that meeting. So at Project Management Institute tonight, should my wife not attend, I will arrive early. I'll be there at 4.30. I'll be setting up. I'll be getting comfortable with the room, walking on the platform, just standing there and visualising what it's going to be like, controlling my nerves, getting comfortable. Probably the first person who arrives, I will metaphorically shake their hand and introduce myself and say, hey, I'm feeling a bit nervous tonight. I'd love your feedback at the end of the presentation on whether I came across as being confident or whether you could tell that I had a bit of a nervous quiver and I was a little bit of a nervous wreck presenting to the Project Management Institute. I'd really love your feedback. And after my presentation, there was pizza, food and a few drinks. So we stay back and mingle. I can approach that person and ask them, how did I go? And that's one of the values of being first in the room as a presenter, as a trainer, get there early. And as people arrive, hey, I love feedback. The third way to, give, to get feedback is video record yourself. Most of us have mobile phones. Hand your mobile phone over to someone. Get them to record your video. This webinar is being recorded. I can play it back and become my own coach. I can notice, I can count my ums and ahs and any other filler words that I may use. My filler word at the moment is so. So what I want to talk about next is, so let's move on and move on to the next one. So a little bit like a needle and thread. Other people's filler words are ums and ahs. And you know, you know, it's really good to have you here today. And you know what I'd like to speak about next, you know. The video does not lie. Here's what you can do with the video. You can email it, the file, to a friend, to a colleague, to a coach, to a mentor who can then also give you feedback. Feedback that will help you improve and just take it up one little notch. The camera does not lie. Just a word of caution if you are going to review 
your own video. So here's a couple of rules. Uh, number one, only watch about five minutes. If you've been presenting for an hour, just pick a five minute section that you review. Doesn't have to be the first five minutes. It can be a section somewhere in the middle. First five minutes is also fine to review. So make it a small amount of the video, not the whole hour, five minutes. The second thing is you need to disassociate yourself. You need to draw yourself away from the person in the video. You're not looking at yourself. You're not critiquing yourself. You are now impartially critiquing the speaker in the video that you are watching for five minutes. Because if you don't, you'll start to look at yourself and become self-critical in other ways. Uh, has my beard really turned that grey in the last six months? Uh, my New Year's resolution of losing 10 kilos is not going as well as I hoped. And that'll reduce your ability to look at the speaker, their gestures, their message, their filler words, their nonverbal communication, their passion, their enthusiasm. You look at the speaker with a critical mindset. You do not look at yourself in the video. Otherwise, you'll be, you'll be more paralysed by self-doubt, self-assessment. Video is really good. Here's another tool still related to video. Sorry, video record yourself. The camera does not lie. Share the file with a friend. Share the file with a colleague. Uh, self-evaluate. If you are going to self-evaluate, then please uh, make sure that you do do that disassociation. I've just missed something, so forgive me here. I'm just going to go. Uh, we'll come back to that. Post-presentation, how to get feedback. Ask questions. I see some of you on the webinar. You've attended my workshops in the past. And Unet, I thank you for your feedback. Your feedback was really valuable to me and assured me that what I was doing was of value to you. So please follow up your presentation with a feedback questionnaire. I did a workshop for ATI Mirage in Perth yesterday and they have an online feedback that they fill out immediately after the workshop. So the workshop finishes at four I stop at 3.55, take people to the website and the link and say, can you please complete this post-workshop survey? So ATI Mirage, which I do contract work for, they want to know that the, the audience who's paying ATI Mirage to do the training, I'm the, I'm the trainer, they want to know that I'm giving value and that feedback goes to ATI Mirage first, and then it comes to me. It enables me to change, to adapt, to improve, to realize I'm doing a good job, to avoid scratching my backside, as I mentioned before. Do a feedback questionnaire. There's feedback questionnaires where you can have the uh, forced choice. I don't like them all that much. How valuable was the speaker on a scale of one to five? Most people put two, three or four. It's called the error of central tendency. People are reluctant to give five star rating. I prefer an open-ended questionnaire. What worked for you? What was valuable? What could the speaker do differently? What could they change? And this is where I got the feedback about Please provide fluoride and chloride free water. I have an allergy to chlorine and, flu and fluoride. This is where I got the feedback, Peter, you scratch your behind when you walk across the stage. So 
So do a survey post workshop. Great way to get feedback. Use a coach or a mentor to give you feedback. So I sometimes attend a presentation where a person that I'm coaching specifically to give them feedback. It can be part of my coaching uh, package. People will buy five sessions and I'll say, do you have a, a workshop, a facilitation that you're going to be delivering in the next four to six weeks? And often they do. And then I say, is there an opportunity for me to sit in the back and take notes? And then I can give you feedback. Or alternatively, can you record this session, send me the video file, and then I'll give you feedback because it may not be possible for me to sit on, on a high level boardroom meeting. Use a coach or mentor to give you feedback. A coach is generally a, a commercial arrangement. You pay someone to coach you. A mentor can be formal. So you pay someone to mentor you or it can be informal. One of your supervisors, one of your bosses may be informally mentoring you and can give you feedback. A public speaking coach who can give you feedback will be more valuable often than a mentor. A mentor may not be a great public speaker themselves, so their feedback will be around their knowledge of public speaking, which may not be as, as broad as a specialist public speaking trainer and coach. When you do do a video, there's a couple of apps out there. One of them is Coach's Eye. And you can record yourself before and you can record yourself after. You can record a speech that you did six weeks ago and you can record a speech that you did last night or last week. And you can run the two videos side by side. So you can see in the image that they're using it from a sporting perspective. And this young man's baseball swing is not quite right in the lower one, in the top one. It's more of a correct swing. And so as a coach, you see the before and the after. I could have used it in yesterday's workshop. The first presentation people did, they did fig leaves and they were all sort of fidgety and moving around. The second one, they stood nice and calm, no fig leaf, no movement swaying around. And it was like chalk and cheese. And they had to take my word for it. Had I video recorded presentation one, presentation two, and played them back side by side, they'd have noticed the difference. So this is just a little trick to allow you to self-coach or to allow a professional coach to point out any errors, any idiosyncrasies, any areas of improvement. I'm writing a blog for July's newsletter around, are you a noisy speaker? So noisy speakers are um and ah and you know and filler words is noise. Noisy speakers are also That is noise, that is auditory noise, visual noise. Noisy speakers are. Should I have palm cards, notes that I'm playing around with my palm cards? So that's visual noise. Noisy PowerPoint slides. You notice my PowerPoint slides do not have my website on every slide. You do not know which number slide I'm on. There's no corporate logo or corporate branding. The slide is meant to be clean and simple. You can use Coach's Eye to help people eliminate noise. The bouncing hands speaking in time with what I'm saying is also noise. The politician speaking doing a press conference and off to his shoulder are all the observers nodding up and down. I call them noddies. 
and I'm watching the noddies and I don't hear what the speaker says. Coach's eye, video helps you correct and understand that. Use a mirror, especially for nonverbal communication. Maybe you want to grow your gestural vocabulary. Maybe you need to reframe, look at things from a different perspective. Maybe there's a couple of ideas you need to link together or maybe connect two ideas together. Two ideas, maybe three ideas you want to share. Maybe you need to layer the learning. The mirror is a great way to see what you look like, to practice some gestures without being noisy, to avoid the fig leaf, bring it back up to more neutral, more confident. So use the mirror to give yourself feedback, to grow your gestural vocabulary, to eliminate any distracting things. So practicing, once again, five minutes would be enough in front of a mirror, will give you feedback on what your nonverbal communication looks like. In summary, feedback is really valuable. What we think has happened, how well we've done in our own mind is not the audience's reality. We need to get feedback from the audience. So have a trusted colleague, have someone in the audience who you don't know. Uh, have a look at a video and see how you're going. Use a questionnaire to follow up. The questionnaire will give you an idea of not only what you do from a public speaking perspective, but the value. Have you inspired your audience? Have you created a change in their mindset? Use a coach and a mentor that can give you comments on your speaking style and also your impact. And finally, use a mirror. You don't need to use all of them, but can I encourage you? My, my motto is every time I speak, get feedback. So tonight, my wife will be giving me feedback at the Project Management Institute. Every member between 70 and 90 people also fills in a survey post presentation. So I'll also get feedback from the Project Management Institute. I can use my wife for the specific feedback and I'll get more general feedback from the Project Management Institute. Moving forward, next webinar, 21st of June, six steps to help you prepare for every presentation. For me, it's the preparation that really makes your presentation a success. Workshops coming up, Bendigo, still planning to go. Uh, the lockdown in Victoria is, is easing and Bendigo is a rural city. Port Hedland coming up on the August 10th and 11th winning presentation skills. And my wife is running a Women in Leadership Masterclass in Perth, 22nd to 23rd of November. Uh, please make use of me, any comments. This webinar is recorded. If you would like to review it, just send us a question. So remember, feedback matters. Feedback's how we grow. Feedback is how we learn. And for me, I think in public speaking, the best feedback is external feedback. While we might be able to self-evaluate our fitness, our weight loss program, how we're going with our, our online study, our MBA program, I don't think we are a good evaluator in our mind, in our thoughts of how well we've done at a presentation. We need to do that external step, get a coach, a mentor, an audience member, or review a video ourselves impartially. Thanks for your partic participation. My final question to you is, how are you going to get feedback the next time you stand up to speak? Thanks, everyone.